welcome back to Bits Be Trippin'. We're excited to have you back. We got this episode jam packed with five separate items that we're going to be covering, including a deep dive on the new AMD Pro Duo, a 6X rig of 390Xs. We're also going to cover a couple new rig designs with a pair of 4X rigs holding R9 390s, then bringing a few cards back from the dead, we went ahead and tried a different rig design with a little more clearance. Lastly, we repurposed those R9 280X Toxics, and I think you'll like the way that one came out. So as you can see, a pretty epic episode. So let's go ahead and kick it off. This is episode 27, Multiple Rig Configurations. This is your host, Carter. Let's get into this. So first up, we got the AMD Pro Duo. So the Radeon Pro Duo is a liquid-cooled graphics card. This is the latest installment from AMD. Really coming off as the successor to the 295X2, this card essentially takes two Radeon Nano chips and puts them on a single card. They paired that with the new HBM memory and a 4096-bit interface. This card comes with a 1 GHz core clock, and on paper from AMD, they're saying this thing only uses 350 watts. So enough about the marketing coverage, let's actually see what this thing looks like, what it can do, and how it will serve for mining. Now the version we are testing is the XFX version of this card. Pretty standard packaging here, nothing really wowing you. And since we were only going to use one of these cards for the test, we did throw it in a single rig with ETH OS and we did actually put it into another PC to try a few other performance metrics on it. Now straight out of the box, right with ETH OS, this thing was not performing very well at all. And matter of fact, looking at the kilowatt, this thing was only using about 130 watts of power, which really looked at, given the hash rate of about 25 mega hash per second, the driver that we were using with ETH OS 1.0.4 more than likely was not very compatible with this card and only one of the Fiji processors was actually running. We did not spend a lot of time trying to get this to work with ETH OS and immediately put it back into one of our PCs. Now at the time of us getting this card, the new drivers just came out, 16.5.3. Now, as most of us mining knows, 16.5.3 does not pay dividends when it comes to crypto mining. When it comes to Windows AMD drivers, 16.1.1 and lower seem to be the best solution. Now, we've reached out to AMD to see if we could find out what is the difference between these drivers after 16.1.1 and higher end drivers of what causes the halving of most of the mining. We have not got a response, but if we got an AMD rep that's watching this video, we would really like to talk with you to see if we can get an arrangement to make sure that the next set of drivers come out do consider this issue. Now we did try to load some older drivers with this card with no success. We had to stick with 16.5.3 and went ahead and ran the what we could with QT Miner. With some minor tweaks of the clock, taking it up to 1080, we were able to get 44 mega hash out of this card, running right around 420 watts in the box. Now this was an i7 PC with a few more peripherals on it, so the PC itself was about 120 megahertz under a load. But I still feel the card that was not performing the way it really could, even with the driver set that it was provided. So we went ahead and put 3D Mark to see if we could really tax this card to see if it really could stretch its legs. And sure enough, the power usage did go up by almost 100 watts. So there it looks like the card is really not stretching its legs with mining right now. I think this is a prime candidate for another driver update and possibly a little minor tweak to a BIOS and probably get this thing dialed right in at about 65 mega hash. Now moving on, next up, we went ahead and put together a 390X 6X rig to see how that compared to a lot of the R9 390 rigs that are out there performing at a strong 180 mega hash. Now these cards are a little more expensive than the 390s with an average price of right around $410 to $425, about $100 more than the 390. So on a 6X rig, that's almost $600. So from a price versus performance, it doesn't take a mathematician to figure out that it's gonna take about 12 to 15 mega hash each card in addition to make up that difference in price. But that's not gonna stop BBT from building this rig and showing you what it can do. Now first from a power standpoint, we went ahead and did the math on this and figured we needed to go 1200 watts with the very first three cards that's gonna be holding up the motherboard in addition and that we would get by with 1000 watts. So we aimed for max efficiency on this one and went with the EVGA Supernova P2-1200 and the P2-1000. Now the base hardware here was actually used in our live stream and through that configuration and going through it a few times, we actually landed on 1160 core with 1625 memory on this rig to nail in 182.19 mega hash sustained. And taking a quick peek at the kilowatt, 
on that first power supply, we're holding a strong 1140 watts, which is just under that 1200. And again, this is a platinum power supply. And when we took a peek at the other power supply, it was just under 940. Now at the end of the day, this is a very high-end PC. I mean, we're talking, this is about a $4,400 rig when fully put together, looking at time and everything invested into it. But given the stability at 182 mega hash, this thing really is a good runner. So next up, we actually took a suggestion from a viewer. We had a person come to us and say, hey, why don't you guys ever use rivets on any of your mining builds? I don't know, that's a great question. So we went down to the local hardware store, bought a rivet gun and decided to do a dual build. We wanted to actually take eight cards, slap together two different 4X rigs and put them on two separate mining pools. Now everything would be exactly the same, same motherboard, same amount of memory, same type of hard drive, same cards. Really the only difference was one rig would actually have the rivets, we'd actually try that out and then put the other rig together in our standard fashion. However, shorten it up a little bit and tighten in a spot for the power supply in a different way than we normally do. So the primary reason for this build was really to try out two different mining pools at the same time with the same rigs to see what the payouts are. But with the rivet request and then some of the other suggestions when it comes to actually locking in the power supply within the rig, we decided to have a little fun with it. So in full disclosure, these actually two rigs are running against two separate mining pools right now. And this is more of a long-term one month test for us. Now we'll have a separate video on the results of that, but we wanted to go ahead and at least explain what we're doing with these rigs and then have some anticipated content for you guys to come back to. But it doesn't stop us to go ahead and take a look at these two designs. Now we went with a completely different layout for the actual motherboard and power supply than normal. This rig is actually a 16 by 16 by 11 inches tall. Now that accommodates four cards pretty well when it comes to the larger 390 cards. And with the tower strut that actually holds the graphics cards up, it allows us to play around with that and flip that up to where we can tuck the power supply towards the back in an upright position at, with the fan exiting the exhaust out the back. With respect to the rivets, I actually really like the way it comes out. It's a much more cleaner build. However, it did take and add about 15, 20 minutes to the build process. Now I think this kind of build is a prime candidate for a live show for I can genuinely walk you guys through on how to get this build out, measure and, and put it together. If you are in fact interested in seeing this in a live show just drop us a comment below tell us yeah hey build one of those rivet machines in front and then we can show you guys how this is done now moving on and dovetailing on one of the other viewer comments was about the height that we use right now and almost all of our rigs were anywhere from six and a half to eight and a half inches on the height for where the graphics card sets over the motherboard and some of the users have been suggesting to take that up a notch so that's what we did with this kind of what i'm calling a necro build on this 270 X MSI Twin Frozer mining rig. Now the actual tower struts that hold this rig up are 12 inches in height. And what that does is open up a lot of air underneath. Additionally, if you're needing to adjust a riser or switch a riser out, this gives you a lot more room to play with on that. Now back to why we are calling this the Necro rig. We brought this one back from the dead. The R9 270 and 270X cards were really the workhorse towards the end of 2014. Their lower power usage and decent hash rate really filled the void of the 7950s that were starting to age out. Now these type of cards came in two configurations, both two gig and four gig in the later months when they first came out. These particular cards are rocking the two gig, which means given the DAG being a little under 1.5 gig, you need to have some environmental variables to ensure that you're maximizing the use of that available memory. But taking a quick review of the performance that these things are still putting out, we're talking almost 100 mega hash here, 90 mega hash, for these cards rocking at about just under 900 watts of power. Now that's very close in line with a few of the live stream builds that we just did with the 370 overclocks. Now that puts these cards average at about 14.7 to 15.5 depending what your clock settings are at. Now we had these at 1175 and 1500 memory. Another real strong setting, which was about 88 mega hash, was 1125, which is a lot more stable for these cards. In closing, the 270X and 270s are still really great cards, and they still work with Ethereum. So if you could find them really cheap, you could put together a two and three rig build for a sub $500 cost. 
Now let's shift gears and bring up one rig that I've been looking to bring to you for the past month. The 6X R9 280X Toxics. Now, a few years ago in February of 2014, we graced the screens with these beauties and a full rig, which since then has accumulated well over a quarter million views. And at the time, these were $530 cards each, mainly due to the price increase at the time when Litecoin and Dogecoin and everything was really blowing up. And by and large, since that time, these toxics have been rocking away, chewing through and kissing proof of work for the last two years responsible for hundreds of solved blocks across Feathercoin, Litecoin, and Dogecoin. But given the rise of Ethereum over the last few months, we decided to do something special with these cards. Inspired from several pictures of people posting up their rig porn across the internet of different configurations, out of all the different designs, some of the best thermal dynamics come off of cards that are stood vertically. In addition to being stood up vertically, we really wanted to get some separation. Now the BBT staff actually has a fabricator on site and really is the brainchild of a lot of these different designs and color schemes that we have. Most of you know him as the bald guy in the first few episodes that we had. Well, that bald guy's name's Brian and he's really, really good at doing this kind of stuff. After a few sketches and a few cut fingers, he's able to whip up this beautiful vertically standing rig powered by two thermal take 1200 grand power gold power supplies, a single BTC board, the six toxics, and we actually paired up those ASRock BTC board SATA based risers with this one. Now staying up vertically with those sapphire toxics, the rig stood at 15 inches tall, 18 inches wide, and 12 and a half inches in depth. Each of the cards really came out to about five inches of their own compartment space. Now onto the amazing performance out of these epic cards. Now we first wanted to go a long-term test right out of the box using pretty standard clocks for these cards. Now running 1125 core with 1600 memory, these things locked in at 127.36 mega hash for all six, which is actually really good for the 280X series. But the most impressive thing was taking these cards to where they're really comfortable at, at 1200 core and 1875 memory. This rig locked in at 136 mega hash for a 280X is unbelievable. But at those kind of rates, we're talking 1150 watts per three cards. So you're talking over 2200 watts at that configuration. If you dial it back down to the 1125, it actually runs at 972 watts per power supply. And holding that, we wanted to prove that that was stable and ran this thing for three days, almost four days straight to show how Rockstar stable these Toxics are in this rig configuration. Well, I hope you guys were impressed with that. We had a great time making it and running it over the last few months. And even to this day, still running strong. Now that was a pretty full episode, but I want to go ahead and show a few of the sneak peeks of what's coming up in the next one. Now we're looking at doing this within the next week. We have an amazing build. An absolute ton of hours were put into this. It was a very ambitious project and we can't wait to bring it to you. And if you've been following us on Twitter, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Six R9-390X2 cards in a single rig. That's 12 GPUs on the same frame. We're gonna make sure that video is epic and we can't wait to show you it. If you like what we're doing, please subscribe. Please show your friends, tweet us, Catch us on Facebook. Let us know what else you'd like to see. We're going to be getting onto that Pascal and on the Polaris setups for both NVIDIA and AMD coming up. It's going to be an amazing summer. We can't wait to bring it to you. Stay tuned.